Well, it's time to jump in and talk about some of these features that we heard about in the overview. And the first one that we are going to talk about is the Azure EP, which is a really cool new feature. And uh, Jeff has been working on it. Jeff, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and thank you for joining today. So hi, Jeff, I'm in the hall. Th you know, thank you for, for welcoming me, Cassie. I a program manager on the Onyx Runtime team, really focused on hybrid and edge scenarios and what we can do with that going forward. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about why somebody would use it and what it is? Absolutely. So it, it's really our first entry into the, the hybrid world enablement so that a developer doesn't have to worry about, yeah, I've got a, I've got a segment out or, or have two different, two different uh, paths of my code. We're providing a single API. So I can, you know, as a developer can say, hey, for this scenario, I want to go to the cloud, or for this one, I want to go on the client and, and at runtime. So you don't have to decide before. So this allows these kinds of scenarios, such as, hey, if I have a high, you know, a very large, super accurate model in the cloud, like a large language model, object recognition, whatever that happens to be, I can you know, use that in the cloud, but I can also say, hey, there's times where either I have I, I need super fast latency or maybe my device is not connected or has horrible bandwidth and I want to do it on the client regardless. Uh, and so we can allow you to say, hey, depending on the, whatever happens to be happening on device or in situation, do this. It also allows for one other great scenario, which is I can have a gating model that says, hey, based on what the input is or what I'm currently seeing, would it be better to go to the cloud if, if right. it's available or would it be better or I'll be you know, accurate and enough to be on the client and thus save all the latency and cost and be that much more responsive. So those are some of the two key areas where we see developers really being able to take advantage of this. That's huge. And that is something I think when with MLOps in general in the AI space, it's a very hot topic. And it's honestly, it's hard. There's so many different uh, ways, things to think about when you're configuring your hardware for cloud um, for cloud APIs or for running locally, how do I leverage, you know, in the different languages? And obviously Onyx Runtime supports multiple languages. So you have that benefit for doing the edge side. Um, and then being able to make a small change to switch to a cloud model that you've now optimized and are using there, that's extremely powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really what we see as sort of the, the first step on kind of a where we're going to go further and further with hybrid and give more and more capabilities, but we'll still do it again through one API for the developer so that it's make it as easy as possible. And that's sort of our, our first principle as we move through this. So we talked about a lot of capabilities here. What do you find the most exciting about this feature? I really think uh, the most exciting part is going to see what our developer community comes back with as they use this and what they say, hey, these are the interesting things we we're able to enable. And better yet, hey, here's some other ideas we'd love to see in, in, in Azure EP and what we think that would also allow us to enable. Again, it's just the first step into the hybrid world between client and cloud. And I'm you know, really interested to see both, you know, what, what we can enable together on this. Love it. I think it's really interesting too, just to think about the different um, like dynamics and like deployment kind of architectures that people are doing now. And I, I feel like this is more of an emerging one where people are starting to realize that they can run, you know, distilled versions of the model on the edge and save cost and latency and all of those kind of those, all those benefits for running the model on device. Right. And so they're starting to even like think about this as a deployment structure. And then when you do that or, or starting to think about it as a deployment architecture, and then when you start to actually implement that, all these new kind of problems come in. And I think that this EP really just solves them for you before you even kind of like run into them. Yeah, absolutely. It really gives, you know, the user experience back into the hands of the app developer to decide at runtime things you wouldn't necessarily know when you're compiling the app. So you don't know whether I'm, I'm going to have, as a user, going to have connectivity or not, or whatever the other variables I want to look at. But I can decide that and I can update that without having to worry about updating even my models. That's just application logic. I choose which path I want to go when, hey, based on what I learned about, about how my user uses my app too. So that's what I mean, it just gives you so much, so much more capability and power in the hands of the application developer. Totally. And I didn't even think about that. If you don't have, if you lose internet or your device doesn't have, you know, that connectivity in that moment, your app will still work. Correct. Yeah, it just opens up so much more. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are now going to look at some demos on how to use this new feature. 
Now that we've learned a little bit about this new feature, we actually have the engineer that worked on it here to talk with us. Thank you so much for being here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, morning, everyone. So my name is Randy Shui. So I'm the one of the contributor to uh, this ORT release 1.14. And with, with this release, oh, we have delivered a few cool features, which I would like to demo to you today, which may assist you a lot in your daily job. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first thing I would like to demo you is uh, my endpoint that deployed on the Azure uh, Machine Learning. As you can see from my screen that there are a few endpoints I already deployed there. So before the, uh, each of these endpoints, there are models serving uh, as a server side, and the user can utilize some uh, client script to ping these endpoints to get uh, results from the inference. Let me quickly open one of my endpoints. So here, so behind this endpoint, what I deployed there is a, a object detection model. From this screen, you can see the, the status of my uh, deployment, which succeeded. Succeed, succeed. And uh, you can see the URL of, the, of this uh, endpoint. So uh, this is a how uh, roughly uh, generally how it looks like that when you deploy and manage your endpoints on Azure Machine Learning, right? So uh, uh, so before uh, we're moving forward with uh, uh, any uh, uh, conception tips of utilizing these endpoints, I would like to show you the the, the Triton server that is uh, we utilize to uh, deploy the endpoints. So namely that uh, uh, each of these endpoints I deployed there, they are uh, the Triton server, which is developed by uh, NVIDIA. From this page, you can see that it's on GitHub, where the link will be attached, that it's a, it's a server client suite developed by the Triton. For the server, it can host a bunch of models. And for the client, it can help ping the endpoints and get the results. Uh, Azure for Azure service, it, uh, it has it support this uh, uh, Triton server deployment as a preview release, it, where the, the deployment tapes are published in this link. As you can see, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a wiki page about the deployment of this Triton server. It's still in preview release, but uh, still with, uh, with uh, uh, impressive performance and stability. Uh, OK, let's go to the details about the deployment. If we uh, visit this page and we select Python as a deployment language, you can see that you can see the uh, detailed step of, about deployment. First, maybe you have to require, uh, you have to install a few required uh, prerequisites. And the next, you may be asked to uh, specify the subscription and the resource group that uh, you're, you're owning, uh, you're owning uh, as a, a Azure resources. And uh, finally comes a core part where you have to specify which model you want to there. Namely, you have to specify the model name, version, and location, right? And uh, next comes the final part, where you just uh, create a client and uh, do the deployment. So to give you an overall view of uh, how this script looks like, let me pull up one of my scripts. Quick, which... quick question. Mm -hmm. So you were able sure. to take this, uh, it, it's like an image, right? The Triton um, image, mm -hmm. um, set that as your inference compute and then use the Azure SDK to deploy an endpoint using that existing that existing image, right? Am I understanding mm -hmm. that right? That's right. So uh, like I said, I just pulled the script from the website. So uh, I will just want to give you an overview of uh, uh, how it looks like uh, in one piece. Uh, we install some uh, packages, we config our IDs, and we create the cloud, right? And we, 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 we will specify which model we want to deploy there with all kinds of information. And we do deployment. So there's one thing I would like to stress on here is that uh, I would like to show you the, uh, the model folder structure. Since uh, we are deploying a Triton server, we have to follow the protocol where the Triton orders. Let me let me just uh, uh, highlight the folder here. As you can see from my screen, there there is a folder called uh, models. That is a pass I specified here, where under the folder you can host uh, all kinds of models. And uh, and in this folder you can see there's a subfolder named like model seven. And that is my model name. And another subfolder that named like two, that's my model version. And within this model version folder, you can see there's a finally a model that is a uh, model Onyx. Okay. And uh, another uh, big piece of uh, configuration is uh, that in the same folder uh, of this model two folder, there's a configuration file that's called config pptxt. So for this Triton server to be deployed, you have to specify how the model looks like. Let me open the file. So this file describes how the model uh, would get what it would, 
uh, would accept as input and uh, uh, what will be the output. Since we have deployed an uh, object detection model, we can see that uh, there is an image as input. And we have an uh, object detected as outputs, uh, their location, their type, and their confidence. So um, you can find uh, every piece of information about this configuration from the Chudden uh, uh, link where I shared along with this video. So basically, this is the structure of this uh, uh, folder that, that I like to explain. So, yeah, that sounds important to make sure people can actually deploy the way they need to. They need to understand how the, the, the like folder structure is so that Triton can actually find the model that you're trying to deploy. And yes. it also allows you to version it and everything as well. So that's all handled um, within the project itself, like the project structure itself. Mm -hmm. If I have a model that's already saved in Azure, can I, is there a way that I can use it from the model registry in Azure or does it need to be part packaged as part of my um, deployment? Okay, uh, I think that's a good question. Is that if you already have a model served on Azure, if it's if it's Trident server, you can directly consume it. But if it is not of a Trident server type, you have to deploy it, uh, redeploy it as a Trident type because uh, for the preview release of Onyx Runtime Azure, we now only support the Trident server as our server side. So that is one limitation we will uh, just uh, remove maybe in next release. Yes. Okay, that's good to mm -hmm. know. Let me go back there. So after this deployment is uh, completed and uh, you get out the endpoint successfully deployed, uh, the final part of this wiki page is a, is a testing. As you can see, there's a big section of testing the endpoint, meaning that you can simply copy the script here and uh, reconfig uh, a few parameters and uh, test the endpoint end to end to see everything works as expected. So as you can see that I have a test py file where I copy the script from the website. Uh, um, uh, endpoint here, and a few other things are just uh, following the, 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 the main part. And finally, I will trigger the endpoint by calling the children client. And if everything goes uh, as uh, expected, you can see the output to be printed on the screen, which can testify that, okay, everything works uh, uh, as well as expected. So uh, that's, that may be something you want to do before you really consume our children, our uh, Azure email. So, uh, so uh, the, the, let's go back to the deployment script. So for this script to be uh, totally complete, it costs maybe around 10 minutes. So for the demo, uh, to save time, uh, I will not just uh, run the script here. So next, I'm going to move forward to just uh, try to trigger that point to see uh, what it comes, what okay. our command of installing installation would be uh, look like. So this is a test pipeline where we release our release candidate of uh, this, this feature. That is a on its own time Azure for 1.14, right? So what I'm going to do next is I will install this package into my local box. Okay. Let me try install it. So everything we did while that installed um, up to this point was set up our online endpoint. And now we're going to look at how we can use the Onyx Runtime Azure endpoint locally yes. and work with that online endpoint, right? So all of that was just yes. for our server side model. And now we're going to look at our client side model. Yes, now we're going to look, look at what we need to do from the client, how we config this uh, feature and uh, just uh, ping the endpoint to get results. Cool. I'm going to show you another script since the uh, installation is down. Let me go to the same folder and I'm going to, I'm going to open another uh, script on my end that is uh, infer py. So as a name size, that is this is a short script where we can consume the feature. But before that, allow me to explain a few uh, configurations to you. So as you can see, that is a short script that we installed on its own time, right? And uh, we we're going to do some configuration by this session option. We create a session option and we add a few entries here. As you can see that we have to specify the, 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 the endpoint type. That is Triton, we only support uh, as of now. And we have to specify the URL. This, that is the URL where I copied from my endpoint portal. And also we have to specify the model name, version, and we have to tell that if we want to, uh, everything happen verbosely, that uh, we want to see the uh, detailed logging from the cancel, but this is optional. And uh, okay, next we will load the model from this uh, folder I showed before, right? And of course we have to specify it is a Azure exception provider to consume the feature. Okay, now uh, after the steps here, we should have this model loaded locally successfully. And the next, we will create some inputs. And what comes next is also vital that we have to create some run option. 
And we will tell the red, red option that if we want to use uh, Azure a feature or not. And uh, we have to configure the authentication key. That is a key that you can spot from your endpoint portal. And finally, we do the inference and print the results. So if everything goes well, we should be able to see that, OK, uh, there is an HTTPS call made from our client to the endpoint. And we can have the results printed out. OK, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. So um, I see that you have both a CPU execution provider and then the Azure execution provider. So it can mm -hmm. basically decide whether it's going to run locally or on your Azure endpoint. Where it, means that, it means that uh, we, can, we can have the ability that uh, both running locally and on Azure. Yes. And uh, another answer to your question would be like uh, this run option. As you can see that we can we have this option that uh, to specify whether we want to use Azure. Mm -hmm. If we specify there be to be one, the, the, the inference will utilize this Azure execution provider to send requests to remote endpoint. But if you leave it as a zero, uh, everything will happen locally, meaning that we will okay. empower the user to just uh, select uh, between each run that whether he wants to go locally or go to remote. Okay, cool. So I could add some conditions in here and maybe have some static logic that um, decided whether I wanted to inference locally or on exactly. Azure and, and partition that uh, based on my my needs. Um, yes. That model. And that's all yes. I have to do. That is uh, cool. it, is, it can be on per run basis. Uh, for, 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 for next run, you may choose to go local. And for the run after, you may choose to go remote. That is totally up to the user. Cool. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to run the script, see what happens. So for now, we, we, we are expecting that everything go remote because I'm enabling this use, uh, use uh, Azure Compute to be one. OK, let me open my command line. And uh, all right, I'm going to run the or PY. Let's see what happens. OK, now as you can see that we have a verbose printout on this that there is a there is HTTP, HTTPS call made from my local box and uh, uh, to the endpoint I configured, and as you can see that there's a there's a valid output as a, as output from the remote side, and the script just uh, initiated a run that targeting the remote endpoint. Okay, to 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 try out another option, I will just uh, modify this uh, script a little bit to put a zero there, meaning that for next one I want everything to to be happen. On my local box, let's see what happens. If I trigger this run again, now as you can see that uh, there's no remote call being made. Uh, everything happens just with a local CPU provider. That's everything's getting configured and uh, completed. That's so cool. And there's so many use cases like that. Like you could um, say maybe you want you have like a lower performing model that runs. Yes. And you want that to run, you know, try it first locally. Maybe you don't get the confidence score you want. So you want to use your more accurate model in the cloud. You can mm -hmm. even get like input from a user, like, um, you know, did that answer your question for like a language model or something? And then if it didn't, try going to your cloud model, which needs more resources than running locally. Exactly. Um, and you can partition out exactly how you want to run your model yes. um, with a very small change in code. That is really cool. Right, right. Also, it helps you to save the uh, save the some uh, power from your edge device. Yeah. 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 So, could I also use like the CUDA ex execution provider locally as well? Like, I could use any execution provider that is exactly. supported on the device. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yes. Absolutely. So basically, this uh, Azure uh, feature that we are going to deliver with uh, this coming release as a preview. In the future, we are still uh, planning to just to uh, for better usage and uh, and uh, for faster transfer of data. So it's, it, everything is still ongoing. Very cool. So like right now, like you said, they um, have to use the Triton inference um, scenario, but you said that going forward, that's going to be updated, and they'll be able to use you know whatever uh, deployment inference server that they want on Azure, right? That's like, right. That's right. That's one of the plan that in the future, we may support all kinds of uh, deployment types uh, from email, meaning that the user are free to just utilize what are, what are already there available on email. Uh, so there will be no need for redeploy. Um, and there's a lot of actually benefits for using the Triton server, though, as well. Um, there, it comes preloaded with a lot of different um, configurations that you need for inference, for optimization. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. 
So it, it, it's not really, I guess, like a negative, in my opinion, to have to use the Triton server because it is preloaded and then you can configure it, you know, additionally with whatever packages you need um, for your deployment. So that is correct. Yeah. 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 I think uh, that's uh, all for this uh, Alex Runtime Azure for the new release.